All right, so um, let's see. This is going to be our scene that we're going to demonstrate. And the first thing I'd like to look at is the outliner. When I look at the outliner, I just want to make sure everything's properly uh, labeled. And I also want to make sure if anything's groups or anything like that. Um, sometimes, you know, you, you just never know who you're going to have uh, that creates these models for you. So you want to make sure that everything, it makes sense and what you see is what you get. All right, so the first thing we need to do is basically set this up so that we can create the turntable look, which means that we're going to make this turntable revolve. So this is going to require a little bit of animation. Um, let's see. So let's go ahead and take a look at our timeline at the bottom. And basically, so far, we only have 24 frames. That isn't very much. That means that our turntable, when this thing goes around 360 degrees, um, it's going to be really fast. 24 it's frames is basically like a second. So it's not enough time. So I usually like to go up to 360 degrees, or I'm sorry, frames. So I change that value down here to 360. So this is going to be a nice number. That means that every degree that this thing's going to turn, it's going to give me a, um, a frame, and then it's going to turn one degree. So at the end, I'm going to have 360 degrees as well as 360 frames. All right, so let's go ahead and select all of our objects. And what we're going to do is do a Control G. And this is going to create a group. As you can see in the outliner, we now have something called Group 1. You can also see that there's a manipulator at the center. So it's basically going to revolve around that area here. And that everything's basically selected. If we open up this little plus sign, you're going to see that we got all these little cups and the book and everything, and it's all in this really nice group, which is great. So let's go ahead and rename our group. I'm going to call this Turntable. And what I'm going to do is animate this using the turntable group. I do not want to go ahead and grab these guys and start animating them because they're all going to have its own separate animation. We actually want to select our turntable, and this is where we're going to animate. So what we're going to do is go to frame 1 and click. Make sure you've got turntable selected. Uh, go ahead and click the shortcut S. That's going to create a keyframe. As you can see on the right, in all the channels, you can see that translate, rotate, and all of these has this kind of like pinkish um, color to it. That means that it has a keyframe. If you look at the bottom left, you're going to see that it has a like a red line. That means that it's got a key. So let's go ahead and go all the way to 360. And what we want to do is rotate this. You can follow the green, or it might be faster to go over here to rotate Y and change this through 360. So once you've done that, click S again. So if we did everything right, notice that nothing happened, so I'm going to try that again. Oops, select the group. Make sure you rotate it 360 degrees. Click S. Double check to make sure you got a little red line right there under 360. And now you're going to see that we actually are having a turntable. I'm going to press play and let's watch it. It's a little fast. It's actually kind of crazy. So let's go ahead and take a look at it in real time. To do that, we're going to open it up. with You see the little red man running over here at the bottom right? Click on that. It's going to open up your animation settings. If you look at your playback speed, you're going to see that it has play every frame. We don't really want to play it. We actually want to see it in real time. We want to know how it looks like at 24 frames per second. So go ahead and change that and click Save. And now you're going to see that it's a little bit slow, but you're also going to notice that it seems to slow down, accelerate, and then slow down again. That's Maya trying to be helpful. Maya is trying to say, hey, you are probably animating a character, so I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to help you by making things kind of come in and out so it looks nicer. Well, we really don't want that. We actually want it to just rotate evenly at 360 degrees, just evenly. We don't want one frame to be faster than the other. So let's go ahead and change that. I'm going to press Stop. And let's take a look at our graph editor. I'm sorry. Over here, um, the animation editor. So this is um, all the little buttons you can click. This is the graph editor. And what we're looking at is, 
you can click F and it's going to give you this, um, which is focus, it's going to give you this curve and you're going to see that that's exactly how the animation is working. That it kind of slows down over here, accelerates and then slows down according to this curve. That's not really the effect that we want, so let's go ahead and select all of these frames. So you can just click and drag. <clears throat> and there's a bunch of little options here. One of them is this one right here. Notice that it made it nice and straight. So now when I press play, you're going to see that it doesn't actually have any more ins and outs. That it's actually a very linear animation, which is great for what we want. Now, if I was animating a character, that'd be a completely different story. But in this scenario, this is perfect. Okay, so now that our animation turntable is working just fine, let's go ahead and stop this and let's go back to our animation, into our scene. And um, basically everything looks good. All right, so let's go ahead and set up the next thing, which is a camera. We need to be able to look through a camera so it's going to stay where it is and the animation is going to move it. And then I have my perspective camera that I can wander around. So let's go up here to the top, go to Create, Camera, Camera. And I like to rename my cameras. So this is going to be Render Cam. If you look at your outliner, you're going to see that you have a camera. And just like any camera, you can actually look through it. There's several ways you can do this. You can go to Panels, Perspective. There's my Render Cam. Boop. Now I can move it around just like a regular camera. Um, I can do the same thing with the outliner. I can grab like perspective, middle mouse, and drag it onto the scene, and you're going to see that now I'm in perspective over here. It's perspective. Thanks. I can select my render cam and go like this, and now I'm looking through my render cam. Okay, so I want to see what I'm actually going to get when I render. So let's go ahead and take a look over here. This is going to be our resolution gate. Resolution gate tells us the 640 by 480. We're going to look at that later how we can change that, but right now I can now see exactly what I'm going to render. Whatever's happening inside this box, it's going to render. Alright, so next we're going to set up our camera. This is going to be our render cam, and basically what I want to see is my objects and how do they look like in front of this camera. So notice that uh, there's something a little weird going on. Notice that my objects are actually not centered. If you look at my cup, which is basically here in the center, notice how much it moves around. The reason why is because the turntable has its um, manipulator. Its manipulator is actually to the left of the object. So if I take a look at my perspective view and look from above, you can see that it's actually placed it over here. So to change it, I just have to click D and the manipulator can cha be changed and I can actually move it around. Now notice that it doesn't really affect anything else, it just affects that particular turntable. So let's go to the top view. We can uh, modify center of the pivot. So again it's up here, modify center pivot and that's going to actually look at the whole area and then center it. Let's see what happens. and that looks a lot better. The cup is basically staying in the center, the objects are revolving around the center, everything's working. Alright, so what we've covered so far is creating group, a group and then animating it, giving ourselves a little bit more time. And we've also changed the manipulator to be in the center so that when it revolves, it re uh, revolves according to the center of your geometry. And the next thing we're going to cover now is how to create render layers, how to create occlusion and wireframe render layers, and then putting it all together in After Effects.